Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on Monday, 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 September 28th, and this is another episode of uh, Knife Blog. Now, if you guys go back to the 1980s, where, you know, pretty much you had the Rambo knives, you had all the chopped sake flicks, uh, lots of sci-fi stuff, most emblematically and most specifically, you will find a lot of stuff that was whoosh, camouflage. Read like this one being a Gerber Mark II Guardian. This one being, of all things, I believe this guy is a tailor. Uh, let me verify and validate here. Uh, this one is... Oh, hell, man. They polished it so much, they've actually taken the name off. And I do believe this actually is a tailor. This is absolutely one of my absolute, absolute, absolute favorite knives from this era. Simply because the grinds on it are just absolutely beautiful. These things were done... In a number of places in Japan, read like Hattori, read like Seki City. Uh, there was a couple other guys, I can't remember off the top of, my, top of my head, but there was a lot of really good grind guys doing this. And you can see the classic style of, you know, hollow grind here, and that beautiful point known as the Kisa, C-H-I-S-A, the Kisa, or Chisa. The Chisa, which is absolutely emblematic of the appropriate style of Tonto Knife. Now, the beautiest thing about a Tonto knife is it's an armor-piercing point. These things are designed to go punching through the armor of the period and time where they basically had, like, interlacing pieces of steel or iron or copper or brass, whichever it was they were doing at that point in time, and had an interlacing, almost, style of chainmail. Well, the point in process of it was the Chinese and the Japanese did a lot of stuff that is very, very innovative and very, very cool for their time period. Case in point, they knew if you had somebody struck with an arrow, if you hold up a solid object that is an arrow, the arrow will be penetrating, no problem. But if you have something with give that slows the projectile down and doesn't allow penetration. So essentially what they thought was, okay, you shoot a bird with something, the feathers slow it down, it doesn't penetrate the bird. Cool thinking. So basically, if you have something that has a lot of cushion to it, if you shoot an arrow at them and it goes and slows down, it doesn't penetrate, it doesn't penetrate. So same thing along those lines. We've done a lot of very serious thinking along those lines. History is a good tutor, and we do that with a lot of modern body armor. But to go back to these guys, these knives were made and sold. Well, they were made in Japan by those three guys I mentioned before, you know, Seki City, Hattori, and the other names I can't remember off the top of my head. But they were sold under the names of Explorer, Parker, Taylor, uh, a bazillion, Valor. I mean, you know, there was a whole bunch of names that sold almost the exact same knife. Now, what these were is they were 440 steel or better grades of steel with a cast aluminum handle. This one is nice in the aspect that the paint is beautiful on this thing. I mean, obviously, I've polished the snot out of this knife, but it used to actually have, and you could just barely see, like, right in front, right in front of the guard, you could still see a little bit of black. And it was actually a stainless steel blackened blade. Now, is it really dark? No, but it was definitely a blackened stainless blade. They polished the snot out of it, and they pretty much have removed all that lovely coloring therein. But, it is a beautiful feeling piece of steel. I cannot tell you how good this thing feels when you basically do your classic style of any kind of Japanese knife handling. It is a wonderful Tonto. If you guys are looking for something that's not going to break the bank like the cold steel stuff, get yourself one of these Taylors, one of these Valors, one of these Explorers, or one of these Parkers. If you go on eBay and you punch in Explorer or you punch in Parker especially Parker, you will find at least 500 listings all the time. These things sell like hotcakes. But to go back to the you know, original iteration of my story here, and premise and theory therein, a lot of stuff back in the 80s was camouflage. Case in point, this one here is one I've charitably refinished. It came to me very, very sun-faded, very, very rough condition, and it is pretty much a ragtag I don't mind using because, well, it is... Just, it's a used knife. Case in point, I've also polished off all the black. There is a number of notches in the blade. Now, what I did was I basically followed those off and made them actually semi-serrated edges. So they actually do carry an edge, okay? Now, is that going to make the blade easier to break? Yes. But was it a couple of chips that looked like crap until I did that? Yes. Is it still a knife I can utilize and basically do everything I need to do with it? Yes. 
but there is a problem with these Gerbers. Now, classically, when you look at these things, the paint is either in decent shape, and this is actually fairly faded. It doesn't show up really, really well on the camera, but you can see this is actually, with a better camera, you can see this is a Guardian Mark II, or a Guardian II. The reason why I love these things, and i got to be careful, this one's actually very sharp. I've actually played with this thing. But the reason why I adore these things is the sheer handle design is better than the Mark II Gerber. Notice it has this little bird beak style and then, you know, the double edges, what have you. It is a marvelous handle version versus the standard Mark II. The blade is roughly about the same kind of blade as what you find on a Mark II Gerber. That said, this handle design, if you put the two side by side and you play with them both, the older Wasp Waste version, and then this version, which I believe was either uh, Blackie Collins or done by uh, another gentleman. I'll put in the, the annotations. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But uh, essentially what happened was is they came up with later versions of these knives where Gerber was saying, we need to answer the call to the 80s mantra of, well, you know, Rambo knives and, you know, survival knives and combat knives and all the rest of this happy horse stuff. You will see a lot of people that basically use these things in combat very, very effectively. Now, the downside I was telling you about these things, if you look at this blade, you can see a little bit, and it's actually be very, very hard to see on the camera here, but there's like a little bit of oxidation starting around the edge of the blade of the juncture between the aluminum handle, which is cast onto the steel, the Steel blade versus, or stainless steel in this case, stainless steel blade and the aluminum handle which has been cast upon it. The paint is good until you have a point of oxidation where the aluminum has oxidized, read like rust. You have that white stuff all over the aluminum and it lifts the paint right off of the handle. Now, you guys are probably wondering what's the construction of a Gerber knife. Now, actually, I actually do happen to have a good example right here. So... This one would be an example of a Gerber Guardian, a version you will never see, something I'm still playing around, I've never fully assembled yet. But essentially what it is, this is a, another version of a Mark II, but this one is a Guardian One. Kind of cool, huh? So basically you got Guardian Two versus Guardian One. Let me throw a little light on the subject here. Guardian 2 versus Guardian 1, okay? Essentially, you can see the handle difference between those two guys. Basically, it's like the backup version versus the full deal version. And the way these things are made is you had, of all things, the aluminum handle. The aluminum handle was cast on the steel blade. Now, I picked these things up as components off of eBay, and I do intend to make one that has never existed in modern form. This is a Guardian Blade. That's the gentleman's name. I actually found it on this blade. The ones that actually were designed in this handle design were a gentleman by the name of R.W. Loveless. How cool is that? I actually found the information on another knife. Now, case in point, this is a Guardian Blade. It is the smallest one with about a three-quarter size handle, and it is basically intended as a boot knife. Now, this handle actually is for a Mark I, which is actually about a three-and-a-half inch blade, which is bigger than this guy, and it was much, much closer to a Mark II in geometry. Now, you can see the family resemblance here, okay? But also, this one is not camouflaged. There was two iterations, or actually three iterations, if you want to go completely hardcore about it. There was actually three handle configurations with wood and other dressy versions, you know, for like, you know, the really kind of cool stuff. But the camo was one of those kind of cool things. These are never, ever, ever cheap on eBay. I have one complete beater that basically sits in the box. I call that my uh, zombie apocalypse knife. I have a box full of beat up knives. Post that on Facebook. You know, you guys can see the pictures if you guys ask about it. I'll put the links in there. But essentially, it is. I call it my zombie apocalypse box. And it is the beat up, ragged ass looking Gerbers that look like pretty much you're going to find in the worst of the worst of times. Camouflage stuff is really very period for the 80s. Is it still around? Yes, but pretty much now it's like all the modern digital stuff, and it does not look like a woodland camouflage knife. Case in point, you guys should get some of this stuff. You, you really should, okay? It's on eBay. You got no excuse. You should be buying this stuff and having it in your personal collection. Why? Because it's cool. Now, what I did to this one, because it was so sun faded, I basically traced over it with magic markers and renewed, refinished, and re updated the camouflage to look. 
well, at least somewhat close to where it originally started at. But you can see where it sun faded to where it actually was looking better. I guess I should probably break off here. <laughs> this video's getting long. But I thank you guys for your kind attention here. And the camo stuff from the 1980s is around. You merely have to look for it. It is around. It's all over eBay. And if you don't buy it, well, that's to your detriment. But you should have some camouflage. Let me flip this thing around so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Camouflage stuff is cool. Break up with this, folks. You could keep the sun ring as always, always. You know it. You love it. Oh, knife goodness. Mm mm. Gotta love me the hack and stabbers. I'll see you guys later. You gotta keep the sun ring as always, always. Keep it sharp. Stay sharp and don't cut yourself. <laughs> see you guys. Ernest!